Okay, I'm going to start that again. Welcome to the happening Indian Women's Football Webinar. The first of its kind exclusive webinar for the Indian Women's Football. A warm welcome to everyone presenting today. Um, let's start off by introducing you to our uh, panelists today. Start off first with Rohan, who is an Indian player and the goalkeeper of the national team. Welcome to our webinar, Aditi. Thank you for having me, ma'am. Pleasure to be here. Thank you, Aditi. We're going to start off by talking about a little bit your story. Your voice, your voice is breaking. You're not audible. Now? Yeah. Okay. To start off with your story, Aditi, tell yeah. us where you started, what inspired you to reach where you have reached today, and yeah. a little history about your journey to the international. Right. So, um, I started off. Uh, I mean, I've, I've since childhood I was into sports. I loved uh, playing sports. I tried my hand in different kind of sports. Uh, football came very late. Uh, in my career, in my life, uh, it was. I think I was um, 16 when I played my first uh, nationals for the under 19 Delhi team. Um, I was one of the youngest, and that was also by coincidence that uh, my basketball coach he suggested that um, that I should go and give trials as a goalkeeper because there was a trial going on, and I was the most athletic kid uh, in the in our school. So he thought I might just fit in. Um, and might just uh, get lucky and get into the team, um, and uh, I think thankfully he was he was right. Um, I got in. I went for trials uh, for a few days and got selected as a third choice goalkeeper for the under nineteen team. And um, and I, for me, the exciting part was that I get to travel with the team where the team was supposed to travel from Delhi to Pondicherry. Um, so for me, the exciting part was the journey was being with the team. Uh, being with other players and I get to travel um, rather than football because I didn't think that I was going to get any minutes. I was uh, going to be played. But uh, once we reached there and as, as the tournament progressed, um, uh, for some reason, the coach thought that, um, you know, in one of the matches, he gave me a few minutes to play. Um, I think in, uh, Delhi team was leading uh, by a few goals and he gave me a few minutes to play in the, in the match. And... Uh, I think the feeling that I got as a goalkeeper uh, was something that I'd never felt uh, in any other sport. Um, but for me, uh, so that that experience happened. That was that was the start of the journey. I didn't. That was in ninth class. I didn't play much football uh, in class tenth because uh, my parents were very um, strict about my academics and they wanted me to score well in my uh, board exams. Um, and I did uh, well, decent. I scored decently well in 89%. And uh, uh, so in 11th was my lucky break when uh, uh, there was an open trials by AIFF for the under-19 India team. And there were about uh, 50 or 60 girls uh, called for the open trials from across India. And there were about eight or nine goalkeepers. Um, and I was one of them. I was probably one of the youngest. Um, and I had no experience. I've never had never played a full competitive match before. Never really trained as a goalkeeper. Uh, never really got any professional training. But, um, whatever uh, little uh, you know basics I had was uh, from my uh, football coach from the school. Um, and um, so, so but the turning point in my life was when I got my first India jersey. Um, so I went through the trials. I got the uh, you know after so there were uh, selections. So there was um, you know the the players were getting shortlisted after every few days, and my only aim was to make it to the next next list, make it to the next list. This was a three month long program, 
uh, or uh, uh, camp. So uh, for me, and, and slowly as the camp progressed, I realized, you know, maybe if I keep putting in this effort or keep working hard, maybe I can make it to the final team. Um, and then as we got closer uh, to the final announcement of the team, I pushed for being the first choice goalkeeper. Uh, I pushed myself really hard in the training. And uh, and fortunately, I got uh, selected as the first choice goalkeeper. Got to experience uh, playing for the under nineteen. It was an I think AFC qualifiers. Um, uh, so I remember in Delhi, uh, the team was supposed to uh, travel from Delhi. We were supposed to take a flight from Delhi, and my parents had come when we were getting our jersey, and uh, that was the first moment when I held the uh, the national team jersey. And uh, and that for me was a turning point, both for me as well as my parents, especially my dad, uh, because I come from a military background. So he knew or he felt that you know the the respect and the honor of representing the country of uh, uh, you know uh, being one of the players across the country to get that opportunity to represent um, you know your nation. That is a dream of every athlete. That for me and for my parents, especially my dad, was the turning point. And because before that, my dad really wasn't really a big fan of me pursuing football. Uh, but after that, I think he was—he's one of the you know the main pillars and the biggest support that I have uh, throughout my career till now. Congratulations, Sorry, Aditi. And uh, you know, you know, you have reached, and uh, truly, I believe. Parents play a very, very important role in the development of a player's career, especially a girl player's career. Tell us a little more on how you depended on your parents' support uh, while you were younger. Um, I was extremely dependent. Um, I think it's very, very important for the pair uh, for kids to have parents' support to pursue anything in their life. Uh, their support means the world to us as kids. Um, I remember uh, my both my parents when I was younger and we had this these camps for uh, the Delhi state team also. Both my parents were working, so my grandmom uh, she was a big uh, sports fan, so she came down from uh, she lives in another city. She came down and she used to accompany me and take me to all these uh, training camps. And for me, that was if that wasn't there, I would have never been able to attend those camps and be able to pursue football or uh, take take it as a you know as as a hobby initially and now as a profession. Um, so I think uh, and and honestly, I don't think um, I would have achieved anything in my career had it not been for the support of my parents. Um, in terms of starting off, obviously, um, initially when I started. That was an important phase, but um, I think uh, when I was away, when I was in in London, also uh, I didn't have any. I didn't know anyone in London. Uh, I didn't have any connections there. So the only support that I had were my parents, uh, because there also I had a lot of difficulties, a lot of challenges that I faced there. And uh, but a one thing that was constant in my life and was always there was um, you know the encouragement and support of uh, of of my parents and. Uh, both in terms of financial as well as emotional. Um, uh, so I owe the whole of my career and whatever I've achieved to to them. Uh, Aditi, give us a message for parents out there about how they should change their attitude, especially when young girls want to take uh, football yep. seriously, especially girls from slightly lower income groups where parents actually feel there is no future earning prospects at football. Right. What is your advice to these parents? Um, my advice or my suggestion would just be that, um, you know, there's, there is a career out there can be, you know, there's, a, there's so much that you can achieve in any field that a kid chooses to. Um, it's not just football. I think it can be any field. Uh, the only thing that as, that as kid, I wanted from my parents and I got from my parents was the support. And that is all I needed because the hard work, the dedication, um, the emotional up and down that you go, uh, the roller coaster that happens in your career, in your professional career, you have to deal with it personally. But the only thing that you can expect from your parents is to be there as a constant support, um, no matter what is happening in your professional life. So, um, 
for me i think that that has been the major uh, impact and that has been the major positive side of of my career uh, till now and uh, apart from that i would just suggest uh, to the parents that um, just support your kids in whatever they want to do there's a career you can you can do anything and uh, you can achieve anything uh, if you're totally focused and dedicated to whatever field you choose um, and the only thing that the kids expect from your from the parents is uh, to be there to have that sort of uh, you know a, a hand to 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 hold and uh, to fall back on if if you're going through a tough tough uh, journey or tough part in your in your career so that is that is the only suggestion or uh, advice that i can give um, you know i'm i'm i i understand the kids or the parents also have a lot of issues a lot of problems and they also um, have their reasons of not supporting or having you know um, prejudices or apprehension about kids uh, pursuing a career in sports because it's still a a growing industry there's still not a um a, you know a fixed profession especially a game like football which is a contact sport which is a physical sport you don't know uh, how long your career is going to last um, you can have one career threatening injury and it can be the end of your career so um but that that and that is where the parents need to be there to guide the kids uh, it's not like because in today's world i don't think if you say no uh, any kid would uh, it will be difficult for them to to just uh, shut up and and agree or accept it because um, everybody wants to have you know pursue or give it at least give it give their passion a chance um, and uh, and and i think they should uh, otherwise they'll regret it for the rest of their life because i've seen it i've, I've i have a lot, lot of messages i get a lot of messages that um you know saying that i i want to play football but my parents don't support what do i do and all that to that i i can't really say anything because it's very difficult for me to get into that position and and suggest anything but the only thing in general what i can say is um you know if if a kid if a person is dedicated to something um uh, they can achieve anything fantastic your parents and your grandmother could be the really happy that they did support you and yeah. give you all the support that you needed as a hello hello can you hear me yeah yeah can you hear yeah. So basically, um, Aditi, tell us, growing up, who was your role model, whether Indian or foreign, who inspired you to get better at what you're doing? Um, so I, um, so I was, I was before I went to UK, I was already playing for the national team. I'd made it to the senior national team, and I was the first choice goalkeeper. Um, and uh, i was i was in delhi i was studying in one of the international schools in delhi uh, but i for me or, or the the knowledge that my parents had or people in the um, even in the schools that had um, so i was told that i had a great passion for sports and when i told this to my parents when i discussed this with my parents uh, they suggested coming from a military background and the and the little exposure that they had to you know the other industries or the other market out there was very limited so the only suggestion that they gave me was um that i should uh, become a uh, an ips officer because they thought that uh, i was good in studies and i can crack the civil services exam um and uh, and because i used to tell them that you know i need to be in a position where i can bring some change at some level you know and and that was, that's what my mom told me that if, to bring a change you have to get into civil services and crack the civil services exam um and to which you know i had grown up by 11th or 12th i was in 11th or 12th and and i knew that you know it's not so easy uh, even if i'm good in studies i'm not that great to crack a civil services exam um and i i was wondering um, if there's any other way that i can contribute or i can still make you know uh, have uh, been in a position where i can influence a change um so luckily um so i i got into b i did uh, my graduation from delhi university and uh, and in my third year of graduation we have we had so the delhi university had a uh, 
MOU with a university in New Zealand where the, the football team had gone and I was part of the team. Um, this university had all these sports courses listed out. Um, so when I went there, I went through their uh, pamphlet and saw all these courses, which were sports management, sports marketing, sports law, and various other fields within the sports industry. And that's when I was exposed to this side of sports industry. Because for me, uh, in my mind, I only knew that you could either be a coach or you could be a player. Um, and uh, and I didn't want to be a coach because I did. I never thought that I had the qualities to become a good coach. So uh, and that's when I was exposed to this, and I was interested in the ma management side. And that's when I realized that you know sports management is something that is really you know it sounds interesting. That's something that relates to both sports and management. What I'm interested in. So uh, when I came back, it was a little difficult to convince my parents because. Uh, they had their mindset on me getting into civil services and doing the uh, exams. Uh, and also financially, it was, it was a huge burden for them to take uh, because, again, coming from a government service, middle-class family, it is a huge financial burden uh, for, uh, you know, for anyone to go abroad and the, ex the, the fees is very high and obviously the living expenses are also quite high. So, um, so but... Again, this is what, again, I say that uh, my parents have been such a support that they managed to, you know, get uh, the funding and get everything sorted. They were supportive of the idea because this was back in 2014, 15, when sports, they, no one really knew what the sports industry would be like and what the career options are going to be like. Um, but they were still, you know, they were accept, they accepted my passion, they accepted my thought of pursuing a career in the sports industry uh, as a graduate and uh, and now I went to UK to do the sports management degree and uh, uh, from Loughborough University which is one of the top universities in sports uh, across the world and uh, and that's how uh, my journey into so I was playing for the university then I came to London um, and uh, and and started that West Ham journey fantastic uh, tell us a little about your experience at West Ham. How did you cope with the rest of the players? Um, initially, it was challenging because uh, the pace, the intensity, the physicality of the game is completely different from what I was used to in India. Uh, the first, I remember the first few days when I went to when in, went into training. Um, and I saw these sliding tackles coming in from everywhere, even though, like at the beginning of training session. Um, and I was just, I was just standing there. I was like, "Thank God, I'm a goalkeeper. I don't have to be an outfield player to tackle all these, uh, you know, the sliding tackles and have to keep myself safe from all that." So, um, so it was difficult. It, it took me a few sessions to get used to the intensity, the physicality. Like I said, um, such a high and high energy game right from the start, right from the first uh, kick that we do uh, in the training session. So uh, it took me a while, but uh, the people at West Ham, the other players were very supportive, were very accommodating. They gave me the time that I needed to match their standard. And for me, um, there was no other way. I had to get to where their level was because there was no other way out for me. Fantastic. Oh, it's really amazing that you had experience playing for the English national team. You played for an English Premier League team. Uh, tell us a little about your experience of the English Women's League that's been conducted since the last couple of years. What yeah. has it done for football for girls in India? Um, I think the Indian Women's League has has come a long way since the first edition. Um, and I feel it's getting better each edition, each year. Uh, obviously, we still have a long way to go, but I think it's a great start. It's a great improvement. Uh, it's providing a wide pool of, uh, you know, a wide pool for the national team coaches and the... ...wants to see more youngsters, wants to give a chance to more and more youngsters. So I think IWL provides the right platform for young kids to showcase their talent. Um, 
play with and against some of the country. It's great that we're getting some international players also to raise the standard uh, to for for the other players, other girls, young kids to see what it is and what the standard is at the level. Uh, so I think it's a great overall platform for uh, developing women's football and uh, you know improving the standard of women's football in India. Fantastic. Congratulations on winning the IBWL this year. It's been exhilarating for you to have won that trophy. First, which was the toughest team that you played against? Who the players in the tournament that we need to look out for from a goalkeeper's perspective? I think uh, we played the final against Kripsha. It, it was one of the uh, toughest teams that we played against uh, throughout the IWL. Mostly because I think most of the players in the national team, uh, in the in the in Kripsha team, were from the playing eleven of uh, India team, barring a few players who who again have at least played some sort of uh, national team games. Uh, so it was obviously a tough team to beat um, and it was very challenging. Uh, the scoreline suggested that and it was a, a proper thriller for a final. Um, and we we as players really enjoyed it. I think it was a roller coaster of emotions for us also. Um, but it was it was fun and that's how you expect the final to be. Um, some of the young young players that, uh, that we should all look out for is... Um, I don't know if we, if we can still classify her as a youngster, but Ratan Bala is, I think, a very, very talented young girl. Uh, and she has a very bright future. Uh, and of course, Grace is also there. Um, but there are also some other uh, young girls coming up. Um, even, even from Setu, I think there are a couple of girls who did really well for the team that they had. They had a lot of local players um, and they combined really well as a team. So, uh, Setu was also a tough team and had some good players, which was again led by our national team captain, Ashalata. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy that these young kids could uh, play under her because her knowledge and experience, I'm sure they would have learned a lot from her knowledge and experience that she's gained over so many years. Fantastic. Um, Aditi, I'm going to bring you in. Um, Arunava, who is an um, expert on Indian football. Arunava, can you hear me? Arunava? Good afternoon. Hi, can you hear me? Good afternoon, Arunava. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I hope everyone back in Hi. India is good. Hi, Aditi. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Surviving. Surviving. <laughs> I guess that's, uh, that's the most important <laughs> term. Yes, I'm the, I'm the, I don't know, I'm introduce yourself and how you're connected with Indian football, Indian women's football, and then give us oh. your perspective. Um, well, I'm currently, I'm born and brought up in Germany, uh, but uh, literally I've been shuttling the last few years between India and Germany in regard to football development, doing different projects, doing a lot of stuff behind the scenes on trying to help Indian football in general, but also women's football. And um, yeah, at the moment, of course, uh, stuck here in Germany with um, a lot of the football action being dead, even though we are looking forward to hopefully the Bundesliga restarting in the next couple of days um, to give a little bit of normality in the football scene. And uh, of course, I had a lot of exchanges with Aditi in the past as well. And um, always looking to see and help as much as I can in the development of the game back in India. Can you give us a little perspective about women's football in Germany? Um, the situation as it stands, uh, if I look at women's football uh, here in Germany, is, is that uh, Germany used to be the leading football playing nation in women's football with the United States until about five years back. Um, even the other... Uh, European countries weren't as good as Germany were. Maybe the Scandinavians to an extent and Norwegians, the, the Swedish national teams are very, very good. Even the Swedish league was good. You know, one of the top players in Brazilian Marta used to play at Umea in, in Sweden. Um, but you've seen that, that uh, in European football that uh, a lot of the big clubs 
has entered women's football, which is something, sadly, which is not happening that much in India, even though Aditi, of course, played for Gokulam Kerala. So that is a positive example, or FC Goa uh, being another one who have women's teams. And uh, we've seen the rise of, especially Olympic Lyon, who've been regular winners of the Champions League, Paris Saint-Germain, uh, FC Barcelona. We've seen uh, the Women's Super League in England starting off. Um, where you know even clubs which didn't have women's teams now having uh, women's teams, which is the stipulation of the Premier League um, regulations as such. Real Madrid entering Spanish football as well, and and that's been a good sign for the growth of football because a lot of these professional aspects which you have in the men's game are being transported in the women's game. Um, I've seen it in some of the clubs. Uh, the most successful women's team here in Germany is uh, VfL Wolfsburg, who of course have a men's team funded by VW in the background, by Volkswagen, by the car company, and uh, Bayern Munich being, being in the scene. And, and, and most of the German clubs now having teams, which has strengthened the Women's Bundesliga. And uh, hopefully the Women's Bundesliga will also restart by the end of the month or maybe in the first week of June. So that's a very, very good sign to see that uh, here at least we slowly are trying to get back to normal also, despite social distancing in, in uh, football as well. That's it. Uh, I'm sure you're not missing the German name behind me to have a sponsor for our women's team. I feel like I'm trying as to sponsor the people women's team this entire season. And um, I'm really thankful for them for their support for the women's team as well as this webinar. Uh, you know, women's football really needs all the support possible from every corporate in India, abroad, everywhere. Okay, Aditi, getting back to you, um, yes. what do you think um, Indian women's football needs compared to what you receive abroad? What is the difference in, difference in terms of availability compared to what you got in India? Um, your voice is breaking, it's not clear, uh, but I've gathered, uh, I think we put together the question yeah. Yeah. Uh, somewhat. Um, the, the major difference between, uh, between women's football in India and uh, uh, in England at least is uh, the amount of opportunities, the amount of uh, competitive players get to play no matter what level they're playing even at professional level out the year so naturally only it's only when you play competitive matches that you get to improve so the fact that there's so many matches so many clubs so many opportunities of playing um, playing football at different levels throughout the year uh, obviously the standard of uh, women's football will increase um, not just that i think the that is one aspect the other aspect of it is, uh, so while I was doing my sports management, I did a, uh, a thesis on women's football in England and how it's improved uh, in the last few years. Um, there's been a, a proper planning and pl proper in investment uh, from the FA uh, with cooperation and, um, you know, with uh, close uh, connection and uh, support of the Premier League clubs. It has helped uh, women's football increase and develop so rapidly in the last 10-15 uh, years. So there has been a clear planning of uh, to take women's football in, in England to this level and get to the Olympics and World Cup level. Uh, there has been a proper planning and proper investment that done for the past 15 years that has, uh, you know, that has helped uh, them increase and develop so rapidly. Tell us what was the impact of your school coach um, of my school coach, um, I think he was the reason why I started, uh, you know, I got into football. Uh, he, I think uh, that, is, that is one of the biggest things that I got from him. Um, especially, I mean, football was, we didn't really have a team. We didn't really have, uh, like we didn't have a boys team forget about the girls team because we didn't have enough space in our school to have a ground really um, but he was the one who suggested that I go and give trials as a goalkeeper 
I don't know what uh, what thought he had. Uh, if he ever imagined that I'll be, uh, I'll take it up as a full time thing and and stop playing all the other sports, even basketball, which was the you know which was a sport that I shifted from. Um, and he was quite uh, unhappy about that because I play I stopped playing his sport and concentrated only on football. So. Um, a lot of lot of importance to him and a lot of uh, i owe a lot a big part of my career uh, to him also had he not exposed me to the to this sport i would have never um, realized how good i am how what what i you know the things that i've achieved uh, um, in in football obviously while uh, while playing and throughout my career there were a lot of phases when uh, when i thought maybe you know I could have done better if I was playing an individual sport or um, if, if I'd chosen some other sport. But that's something that you always have in your mind. Um, but, you know, now that I've, uh, you know, achieved so much and I've gained so much of um, respect and love from people uh, and, I'm, and, and that I'm wiser uh, now, um, I think uh, it's, it's just about... Um, it, even if I would have chosen any other sport, there's no guarantee that I would have been able to achieve what I've done in football in any other sport. Um, so I choose to look at it and from a from a you know from uh, from the positive side and uh, the brighter side that whatever whatever I've been able to achieve uh, in football uh, and that is the reason why I'm so dedicated and I love the sport so much because um, had it not been uh, what I would be doing and uh, what sport I'd be playing. Captain, you have talked to your coach. A basketball player needs fantastic coordination. And yeah. That's what you need as a goalkeeper. So he has actually made the best choice to get him into football and track up for the goalkeeper. What is the name of your kid, coach? Uh, of my school coach? Yeah, your school coach. Uh, my basketball coach was uh, Mr. Anil Yadav. Yeah, okay. And uh, my football coach was Mr. Manjeev Singh. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, we're going to be taking a short break. And uh, after which, we're going to return back to um, Aditi. And we're going to hear a little more about her enterprise. Um, she keeps a football academy that she started. We're taking a short break for about two minutes. The other people are also doing, but I thought as my contribution to the sport and to women's football, like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they they are like, uh, like these three are like one, like you know, a few that everybody is doing as a sports person or as an athlete. And I guess um, other thing that you should do is put and share what you have been doing. Like if there's a competition that you've participated in, what you've achieved as a player and what are like the little things, the little steps that you're taking, like your journey and little steps that you're taking towards to towards becoming a professional footballer or like how you're training or like the inspirational things or like something good that you do. So I guess it's all about it's, it's all about sharing not your life i'm not saying share your personal life or like share your life no but like share what is important and what you think you want the people to know that is very important all the time you keep sharing something which you do not want to tell people but just to get people's attention that's not gonna go somewhere far in the long run but i guess it is very important to share what you want people to know share your journey share what you're looking forward to achieving and like all the little little milestones that you've achieved in your journey that you're achieving so far and what you look forward to doing ahead. Excellent. I hope a lot of young girls listening in here are going to take that tip from you and they are going to promote their uh, football journey so that more and more people can actually start believing that there is a hope for Indian women's football. Right. Uh, right. Tell me, what has your experience been playing in Canada? Uh, my experience playing in Canada has been great. Um, I guess I, I, I am really enjoying football over here. 
Um, first of all, because I'm playing with a totally different team, which has players from um, which has players from Brazil, US, Colombia, Mexico, and I guess there there are players players from like various places, and I and I get to play football against so many different teams here. So I guess football here is fast. It's it's like it's strong and it's it's so much quicker and like there's there's so much to learn so my football journey and my football experience has been has been really great so far i've got to play so many matches there's uh i've got to play home and away matches which i never got to play before i was never exposed to that kind of an organized professional setup so i guess there was there was so much to learn even though we we were studying we were like as student athletes we were also studying but we were traveling for our away matches and we were coming back and we had our home matches and we had the crowd coming in so i guess it, it has it has been a really nice journey and there's been so much to learn as a player and and develop myself as a player because um because when you're exposed to different scenarios and different situations in the field ultimately that is what helps the child or, or helps like a player to grow because it's just that you have to be so spontaneous in the football field you have like friction of seconds to make a decision and respond and i guess the more you play and the more you play with different players it just helps you in the long run so my journey till now has been has been great my our last season was one of the best seasons after 2008 most like exactly after like after 10 years we had like one of the best seasons and we made it to like the playoffs and everything so i guess it has it has been really good and it has been going great that's good to hear uh what are your um, thoughts on how the indian women's national team is a uh, women's team is going to do in the coming years with all the differences that have been um, incorporated um the support that is being given to the team the exposure trips the fantastic coaches that you all are working with um what is this going to how is this going to help you all where can you all take indian football with all this support i guess what women's team is capable of was like we as players and we as a team showed it where we were given the exposure trips we were provided with the exposure trips by AIFF and then we got the SAF championship and our performance in the Olympic qualifiers round 2 said a lot about the capability that is there in the women footballers around like in, in India especially and in the national team so i guess um if those kind of exposures are repeated and which are repeated because india when in india went for like an exposure trip to uzbekistan they they drew one of the matches they played so well with, with vietnam the results of the team with myanmar has been so good so i guess when these exposure trips and thanks to aiff for doing that and like these exposure trips in the long run i first of all i see india becoming a major powerhouse in football really soon because being exposed to teams who are really higher ranked from us and who are much better in terms of speed and in terms of playing abilities i guess playing against them will always be like a good base to start from to start to build on from there and yeah i guess i we see making india one of the best in asia at least because one of the top, top priorities right now for the indian women's football team is being in the top 3 or like the top 5 of asia and only then we can think of or only then we can have like a base to think of of going to of like of progressing to the fifa world cup and i guess with the extended support and with more and more exposures coming our way i definitely do see india becoming one of the best in asia pretty soon so inspirational to hear that uh, tell us uh, are you aware of, of the structure of football in canada in terms of the length of the season or the number of matches that the girls are playing yeah so the season in canada goes on from um september right beginning of the september till uh november because after that it starts snowing so um after from january till april we have there are a lot of matches that we play 
but they're not a part of the season, but there are like various tournaments that we are always a part of. But the main season, the official season happens from September to November. And in, in that time, you have your home and away matches. So entire Canada is divided into four provinces, West and Toronto is another province. And then there's um, the... Uh, the, the the countries on the side so it's divided into four provinces the four provinces play with the teams amongst each other because there are a lot of teams and in and our team falls in the western province um in the western province we have 14 teams so 14 teams play home and away league match league matches and after that um whosoever wins qualifies for the playoffs so then in the playoffs we play from like the better teams from um, the other provinces and then the top the top teams who qual who make it through the playoffs who so two rounds of playoffs play the national championship which is like all the teams from all over the Canada so this is how the structure works and this way every team gets an opportunity to play with each other and also to make their way to make our way through the national to the national championship and the champion, the champions of Canada. It's a long run and it's a run where you get to play a lot in a lot of matches and you're constantly involved in playing football, which helps us a lot to develop as players and get that amount of playing time. Also, we have a team roster of 30 players. So we always have like 20 players traveling, 20 players playing, 20 players on the bench. And only 20 players can be a part and that roster of 20 players keeps changing. So there's like a lot of players who get, who get a chance to play, a lot of players make the roster, roster changes. So everybody is constantly involved in the matches. Everybody's playing, everybody's getting a chance. So yeah, that's how it works. Um, so that sounds pretty similar to our seasons in India, right? We also have about two and a half, three month season. But right. uh, it just seems so much more organized over there. Um, yeah. Why do you think it's not working out in India the way it's working out over there? Any particular reason? I guess there is not any particular reason for that. It's just that, um, uh, like, you know, that there is no established, like, there's no particular established structure or infrastructure in the way to approach the women's football or like the club or the club football. There is like, when we started with IWL in the first edition, the first had like local, like every state had to play their own leagues and like the top team would qualify. The second season, there was no club, there was no club leagues in the States, but like the teams who approached, they played. So I guess there is no basic structure or on how to approach the women's football, which is which is actually very important and which is needed. Also, we do not have home and away matches, which uh, which also makes it a little different and makes it a little more unorganized. So I guess um, I guess that that's just that because to begin with something to have something you need to have. A particular base and we don't like I guess for women's football that is what we are missing missing we're missing the basic structure for Indian women's football to approach and how to address the situation and the scenario okay thanks Alima thank you so much we're just going to take on uh, Leah who's one right. of the female players from right. Mumbai. Leah are you right. on hi can you hear me hi Leah Introduce hi. yourself and uh, you're free to ask questions to any of the panelists. Um, so yeah, hi everyone. Um, first of all, thank you for organizing this webinar. Um, and thanks for inviting me here. Um, there are there are over like hundred people, so I'm a bit nervous. So bear with me. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna lie. My football journey isn't as exciting as as the previous speakers, but um, yeah, here goes. Uh, I'm Leah. I'm I'm the person with the number eight jersey on Anjali Anji's screen. <laughs> um, I play for FIFA currently. Um, yeah, I've been playing sports ever since I could remember. But but football is is one that that really stuck with me. Um, and you know it may sound 
cliche, but this quote really resonates with me a lot. Um, I learned about life with a ball at my feet. Um, and I've, I've played seriously for the last 12 years or so. And um, I guess I fell in love with it in, in school where I captained the team for 10 years. Um, yeah, and I guess that was the same time I met you, Anjali Aunty, and, and Nirvan, so where uh, I was selected for the under-14 state team. Um, and that was, that was by far one of the best experiences I've had, thanks to you two. Um, it wasn't only in terms of, of like playing football all day long, which was obviously a dream, but also like having, having that camaraderie on, on the team and within the team, I guess, um, I guess that's why, a big reason why I'm, I'm so moved by football. It's because you have this insane support system around you and um, we're all working towards that same goal uh, with, with as much passion as, as each other. Um, however, unfortunately, I haven't been able to play for my state again. Um, that's because I have a foreign passport. So yeah, hoping, hoping those rules change soon, fingers crossed. Um, uh, then I would say that the next milestone in terms of my football journey was, was when I played for my university in London. Um, and I captained that team for a year as well. Uh, that, that was a, a really eye-opening experience in terms of like how underdeveloped um, our city is in, in women's football. Um, I, I know it's improving, but, but it's, it's kind of a shame as I've met like so many, so many girls who are, who are so talented. I mean, many who are, who are watching this webinar today um, who, who were absolutely kill in the sport at, at an international level as well. But I mean, it's only if we get that same training, same facility, same experiences as, as those abroad, and especially from a young age. Um, but yeah, on, on a whole, I've played for many teams in different leagues, different levels, different countries, and, and the sport, like it never, never stops fascinating me. Um, it's given me so much and I don't think I'll ever stop playing like even even when I'm like 80 I'm going to be kicking a ball around <laughs> yeah I, I don't know what I'd be doing without it so yeah that's interesting to hear Leah and I hope yeah they change the rules for uh, OCI holders yeah. and I hope you all can be a part of the national team um, yeah. we're going to bring on Kimberly now Kimberly um, Please come on and feel free to ask questions to anyone on the panel. Hi, I'm Kim. Um, I play football in Mumbai and I've played for the Maharashtra women's team. Um, I had a question for Aditi. I'm not sure if she's still on. She yeah, is, she is, she is. Okay, uh, I just wanted to know, I, um, you were studying in... Um, in the UK and you played for West Ham for the West Ham ladies team what exactly was the pathway into the team is is it a defined pathway or do you have to um, go for like trials or do you get scouted or how, how does that exactly work right so, um, so I studied at Loughborough University which is at a Loughborough town which is about three hours drive away from London um, and so after completing my studies, I got an internship at Decathlon and that's why I moved to London. And uh, when I moved to London, I started looking for clubs because like I mentioned, uh, that there's so many clubs at every corner, you'll find another club um, that you can play for at, at different levels. So I started looking for clubs and the club that was closest to mine was Millwall FC, which, is, was, which was a semi-professional club back then. Um, and... Um, I didn't know what the rules were. I just went in there, gave trials, uh, did my like, uh, did my research, for, dropped them a message, dropped them an email, uh, and said that I'm looking for a club. Um, and uh, so they invited me for trials. Uh, I gave trials uh, for a couple of weeks. And um, at the end of the trials, uh, when they were about to register, they put, there's an online system of registration. Um, that's when they realized that I was on a student visa and I could not play uh, in a professional or semi-professional club. So um, the goalkeeper coach at uh, Millwall was also the goalkeeper coach at West Ham, which was a third division club back then. And, um, uh, and he suggested that West Ham is also looking for a goalkeeper. Why don't you go and give trials there? 
the club was a little far away from where I stayed um, because I was doing an internship also. So I used to work during the day. Um, and then in the evening, uh, you know, it was a struggle to um, get a bus back or, or a train uh, to go to the training session. Um, but I, gave, I went there. I was ready to do anything to, to just get an opportunity to play. So, uh, so that's how I, uh, I mean, went for trials a couple of days and uh, thankfully got selected um, for West Ham and got to play all the matches uh, in both the seasons. So, so to answer your question, there is uh, there there was open trials back then for semi-professional clubs, uh, but for professional clubs the system is different. Um, like you must have read the news about Baladi making to the Rangers FC. Uh, it's a professional contract that she has, and uh, it was a there's a lot of. Um, so you might have heard that I was also struggling with a visa. So. In UK, there's a lot of uh, issues with visa, especially for PA, for players um, to get a visa. It's extremely challenging because there are lots of rules that needs to be followed and needs to be a uh, uh, needs to be uh, maintained. And um, one of which is uh, that you have to uh, be in the top 50 ranking countries. Uh, the other is that you must have played 70% uh, of FIFA international matches. Um, and uh, I think there are a couple of other rules also, uh, but uh, so there was, there was a lot of um, special requests being made and uh, after a lot of rigorous process, I think it took a couple of months to, to get the, the contract, Baladi's contract also finalized. So uh, it's a huge, I mean, thing and uh, it's a long process, but if you're, if you're uh, studying uh, and you have a student visa, then, uh, then you can still play uh, not professionally, but uh, at an amateur level, you can still play and um, get that experience, get that exposure. Fantastic. That sounds really nice. Yeah. Kim, any more questions to any of the other panelists? I just wanted to really know because it's, it were, I mean, you were the first person I heard of who was from India who was playing for a club internationally. And yes. it, is really interesting and inspiring to uh, hear that, which is why I, I was really intrigued to know how it came about. So thank you so much for sharing that. No problem, Kim. Thank you, everyone. This has been a really interesting two hours where we have got a really good insight into the lives of all our professional players. Before we sign off, can we just have some uh, words of advice to all the girls? Um, let's start off with Arunaba. Well, uh, Anjali, um, adding on top of what you said, it's a very interesting session, and uh, I think we've gone a little bit through the generations. I think one thing, uh, if we look at uh, Kuntaladi or look at what Aditi and Dalima were talking about, you see what has already happened over the last few decades. Uh, even in women's football in India. And I think uh, it's now even more fast-paced. And I think, you know, you're going to get a lot of opportunities which were not there even two, three years ago. So always grasp those opportunities. Look at those opportunities. Try and give your best. There will be stumbling blocks. That's life, you know. And uh, I would say that that is very, very important that you stay positive and, uh, you know, and, and, and try and be a positive impact also on your teammates and, and try and do your best. That's all I would like to say. Thanks so much, Arunava. Uh, can we please speak to uh, Kuntala? Kuntala, some words of wisdom. Kuntala? Hello? Okay. Uh, yeah. Hello. Yeah. Arunav already said about the things, and I will uh, repeat. I don't want to repeat, but sometimes I will uh, wish all my girls because uh, so much opportunity have come. So you have to grab it, yeah, uh, grab it, and uh, you should be very honest and dedicated, disciplined, determination. Keep your determination and go ahead. Thank you so much, uh, Kuntala. We are trying to get on Sai. Let's just check if this Sai is available. Sai, are you? Yeah, online? I'm here. I'm here. I'm oh. here. 
finally signed. So I have been in an AISS under 17 team meeting because as uh, you all know, the FIFA under 17 World Cup has been rescheduled, but not, not to a year later, but um, on the 17th of February, 2021. So we're going to get Sai on right here. Sai, introduce yourself and uh, tell us your story so far. Yeah, um, hi everyone, I'm Sai. I'm 15 and I'm part of the under 17 women's national team. So I just would like to thank Anjali Ma'am for giving me this opportunity. It's really wonderful to be here. So I started playing football in school when I was about 10 after watching my sister play and the, um, like watching the amount of fun my sister was having. So I got into it. Um, I started about when I was 10 and after that, I joined a club, uh, which is Bayes FC, which is probably one of the best decisions I've made ever because I had such a great time. So since then, in 2016, from 2016, I've been playing for Maharashtra. And I actually played um, IWL for Bodyline in 2018, which was such a wonderful experience. And 2019, which was last year, I played the Nationals in Kolhapur, and that's where I got selected for the camp. And I've been in um, Goa since then for the majority of last year. So, yeah. Excellent, Sai. All of 15 and already had so much experience. <laughs> so lucky, so lucky. Tell us, uh, how do you manage to cope with your studies as well as uh, your uh, footballing? Um, so when I was back at camp, we used to have training in so and the rest of the time um, I used to study and catch up with what was happening in school. And when we used to get breaks, I used to come back and really put in a lot of um, effort into my studies. And yeah. Is it difficult to manage both the studies and a footballing um, career? Um, for me, personally, I speak it from my point of view. I'm not generalizing or speaking on uh, behalf of anyone else. It hasn't been extremely difficult, but it's not been really easy either. Okay, that's really good to hear. Okay, uh, Sai, I'm going to just get back to you. Let's just uh, uh, take it to Aditi. Aditi needs to go for another webinar. So Aditi, let's just have you for your final words to all the people hearing you here today. Aditi, are you still on? Hello? Uh, I think, I think uh, Aditi must have left since she's got another meeting. Okay, back to you, Sai, again. Sai, tell us uh, what are your aspirations as a young India player? What is it that um, you want to see the Indian national women's team do? in the FIFA Under-17 World Cup? So, um, I hope we do really well in the World Cup. And I hope we really, yeah, that's it. I just hope we do really well. Who is your personal role model? Um, my sister has been um, a great role model for me. Your sister is a great role model. Yeah. Is she also a footballer? She does. She, even actually, she's played for Maharashtra. Okay. So, yeah. Excellent. Um, tell me, will you look at making football your full-time career? Yeah, I will. You will? Okay. Yeah. Tell me, what are the four characteristics that are needed for you to make it to the Indian national team? Um, four, uh, four, four things. Uh, whether it's mentally, socially, or tactically, what what actually helped you make it to that under 17 body World Cup? So, one of the main reasons why I actually made it is because of um, the support that I've had. It's been immense. My parents and um, my family and the coaches. It's been absolutely great. They've, my parents have been so helpful. They used to drive me to matches, get me back help me have a lot of water, eat the right food. So my parents and my family it's, and the coaches, uh, 
mainly because of that. Excellent. So you have a long way to go, and uh, we wish you all the best. Thank you. And we wish the entire India under seventeen team all the best. And um, I do hope you continue to to really do well and reach all the milestones that you plan to for yourself in your football career. Uh, with this, I would like to thank everyone who has attended today's meeting.